Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Brummett Media YouTube channel. Thanks again, everyone, for all your comments, your feedback, your messages to us, your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions to our channel here. We sure appreciate it. Really, really, we do a little dance every time we see those. So thank you so much for all of that support. Um, for those of you who find uh, videos that you enjoy and you'd like to share them on your uh, newsletter or in-house e-bulletin, any of those kinds of things, we'd sure welcome that. Go ahead, you know, copy the link and share it to your audience. And if it helps more people, that would be great. That's what it's all about. Now, we had a question submitted to us by Matt. Matt, thank you so much for this question. Uh, what is the best way to market books. What is the best way to market your books is quote unquote his question. The best way to market books is to have a multifaceted marketing plan. So you don't wanna just count on any one activity to make it, even though everyone knows when you're working on any kind of activity, you're gonna be maybe focusing more on this one than these others, because currently right now, that's what's on your agenda. That's what's on your schedule. That doesn't mean that these other ones aren't important or the ones that you've done in the past aren't also important, but this is the one that's also, that's on your schedule at this moment in time. So maybe you're focusing more on this one than the other. Okay, with that said, you don't wanna have any one single activity um, as your focus to make it, to be successful or whatever. You want to be consistent. You want to be tenacious. You want to be self-disciplined. Um, just because one thing you tried uh, yesterday, last year, was working really well then, doesn't mean it's going to work really well now. And it doesn't mean that it won't work really well tomorrow. So you have to understand that some of these things are going to ebb and flow when it comes to return on investment of your time and effort. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are addressing one step at a time, one activity at a time, while we are maintaining everything we just did, right? All that activity we just did in the past has been, needs to be maintained. So when we have it scheduled in our in our day timer, we know when, what days we're going to be doing what with the previous activities and programs and projects and platforms that we've got in place. But this week we're addressing this new one. So we want to maintain those ones. We want to make sure that we are in the process of maintaining them before we take on the next task so that we are not overloading our schedule and putting too much on our shoulders. We wanna be able to be consistent, right? So slowly, consistently bring in something new to the point of maintaining it, then bring in the next thing that's new to the point of maintaining it. And don't expect that, like I say, you know, if something's doing really well right now, we'll double down on it, you know, because it's doing really well right now, double down on that. But, you know, tomorrow might not be doing so well. Next year, it might pick up again, and all of a sudden, it's doing really well again. So you double down on that one. So you're sort of watching where these multifaceted fingers that you have out there are are flowing. What's doing really well right now? And I'm going to double down on that. What is new? What is something that I want to um, bring in to our marketing toolbox? And so you want to make sure that you're creating that kind of balance in your life. Um, Consistency, again, is your key. Uh, if, if, if you have to let something go or set something aside for now in order to take on something that is going to use up more of your time and your schedule, that's okay too. That doesn't mean that you aren't going to go back to that thing and bring it back into your toolbox, you know, setting things aside, putting a pause button, hit the pause button, bringing it back into play later on, that can always be done. So don't be afraid and don't be disappointed in yourself just because you don't have 50,000 people working for you to take on everything that you need to do. <laughs> Sometimes we have to let some things go. Some things, it's something that we really enjoy. Like uh, not too long ago, oh gosh, I guess it's more like a decade ago now, um, 
I was running a talk radio show and I had been running it for, I don't know, 10 years. I've actually lost count how many years it was as I think it was 15. It might be more like 10. doesn't really matter now. Anyway, I was running that talk radio show and I absolutely loved it, but it took so much out of me to run that radio show for the return on the investment that I was getting, as opposed to the other activities that were in my toolbox that were giving me a greater return on my investment and look like they were going to continue to do so in the future. So like I said, sometimes you have to take something out of your schedule and pursue the things that are double down on the things that are doing well. It doesn't mean I won't go back to doing radio show, but it's unlikely that I'm going to just simply because it takes so much time and so much out of me to do. Uh, this video, these YouTube, this YouTube channel is kind of like my, my balance for that. I still get to do some of the talk radio show activities uh, and the podcast activities that I, I also ran a podcast at one point, but I ended up setting those things aside as well. I had a, a newsletter that I ran for a few years called Bremlet's Muse Newsletter, and it went out bi-weekly and I can't remember how long that was published two to six years I can't remember something along those lines and um, I ended up setting that aside as well because I found in my situation gathering all those emails for that purpose of you know bombarding them with a regular newsletter was not returning uh, was not a good return on investment for my situation for your situation totally different thing when we take on some other activity Dave and I in our business in the future, we might feel differently about that activity. We might bring that back into our toolbox. You see what I'm saying? So um, it's okay to let these things go, but you know, those experiences were not like lost time and, you know, lost effort because you've learned a lot of skills and you can always bring them back into your toolbox in the future in maybe a slightly different way. Um, now that you've learned more or, uh, you know, after your business has evolved in a certain way or when your schedule opens up a little more. The thing with this is, you know, sometimes your blog is going to be doing really well. You might get, you know, 10,000 views in one month and you think, wow, you know, really good. The blog's doing really well and I'm going to double down on it. And you double down on it. And three months later, the numbers start dwindling, you know, and you're thinking, what happened, you know? And then you go on, you're going on your marketing plan, but then all of a sudden it, your Facebook just blooms and blossoms and you're getting a, a ton of feedback and comments and activity and messages with your, with your Facebook. And so you end up doubling down on that. It doesn't mean that you're not running your blog still. It doesn't mean you had to not doing all these other social media, right? So the, that's the key. Multifaceted, watch all those different faceted, faceted things, double down on things that are doing well. Don't be afraid to let things go or put the pause button on things because you can always bring it back into your toolbox uh, in the future. That is the best way to market your books, okay? Hopefully that answered your question. Thank you for that. Um, Maddie, Matt for that. Thank you.